Hey, what's up? David with Brazos Valley Barbell. Today we're going to talk about hand placement and whether there is a, an advantage to having your hands behind or on top of the bar versus having your wrist broken back and having your hands underneath the bar for low bar squatting. So to start off with, I'm going to cover some of the, the pros and cons, I guess more so the, the pros and cons of the, the overhand grip to start off with. And then I'll talk about why I recommend having your wrist broken back underneath the bar uh, for a number of different reasons. So to start off with the, the starting strength hand position, I, I call it that because that's the, the overhand position is one that's commonly recommended for starting strength coaches and I, I guess that group. I, I think the, the value with that one starts off with that it makes you feel like your upper back is really tight. Having your hands, uh, really what happens is by having your hands on top of the bar or behind the barbell here, it forces your arms behind you, which can be a, a, a good position just for feeling like you have some control over the bar and some tightness through your upper back. The problem I think with that is that it ends up most people don't have good shoulder mobility or just the length of your arms forces you into position that we end up creating that movement from a lot of extension through your through your rib cage. And so in all of my other videos I've talked about how maintaining a good brace and a good trunk position probably takes the you know, that's going to be the first priority versus uh, feeling the your your contraction in your upper back. So uh, I actually have I've talked in other videos, I think the, the low bar placement video, that I don't actually coach a whole lot of retraction in the first place, but I do coach depression. So if we, if we put our hands behind and on top of the bar, and then we lose some of that rib cage position, that's a, that's a bad place to start off with. But some of the newer lifters may just get an advantage from that, from just having the feeling of their upper back musculature contracting. And so in the beginning, it may be a smart play to, to feel what that feeling is like. But I think as we get going, we need to, to look more into the, the creating the rigidity from other places, specifically from abdominal bracing and bracing into the belt and then the uh, depression of your shoulders throughout. So uh, when, we, when we put our hands underneath the bar, it allows us to accomplish a number of things. The, the first thing is I, I think it gives us a little bit more space in our arms to position our elbows in a way that I can keep the bar from rolling up my back. That's another big disadvantage of having your hands on top of the bar. It, it's it's going to be a hard thing to keep the bar from, I, I'd say it's going to be hard to keep the bar staying low or letting it drift lower. So one of the advantages of having your wrist broken back is that there is going to be a little bit of leeway. If, if during the squat, if my hips shift back, the bar sometimes will actually need to translate a little bit on my back to stay midfoot. If my hips roll back and the bar moves forward, then I dump over my head or I at least have a very minimal chance of being able to grind through that squat. If I put my hands underneath the bar, if my hips shift back, which I, I don't think is something that we should just allow to happen, but under max effort or heavier squats is probably something that is going to happen so I can be prepared for that, that circumstance by letting the bar be able to stay low on my back. If it rolls forward, I'm done. If, I, if it rolls forward, I'm not gonna have any chance of doing it or standing up with a squat. On top of that, if I don't have my lats contracted well by, by forcing myself into a, an extended upper back position, then again, I'm not gonna have the upper back strength to be able to grind through that squat. So the, the main issue in the beginning, I think is just lifters trying to, to find good posture and, and trying to feel rigid in the first place. And the broken wrist position may do more harm than good in that we're, we're adding another variable, like we're gonna say you have to have wrist wraps, we're saying to, to actively not contract the upper back, or I'd say not contract the upper back, but more so not try to pinch your upper back together very hard. Um, and, and coaching some uh, looseness in certain places but as you get more advanced, I think those things take care of themselves. Let's just get better at bracing. You get better at understanding what the rib cage down and shoulders down mean. And so we can get those things to be stabilized in other ways instead of just forcing my hands into a, an unnatural position behind the bar to create tightness. So I think as you get more advanced, lifters can become a little bit more active with what they're doing. Um, active meaning I can put positions that, that are uh, unfamiliar. I can break my wrist back and keep that bar low on my back because I've gotten better at bracing my trunk uh, without just forcing it by putting my hands behind me. So uh, hopefully that video was helpful. Uh, give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time.